Hi, I'm Ryan Olson. I'm with the Institute for Advanced Studies and Culture at the University of Virginia, where I serve as the director, and I'm here today with Elizabeth Becker. Welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you. Elizabeth uh, earned her PhD in sociology at Yale University and will be joining us at the Institute as a postdoctoral fellow next year, so we're really glad to have you. I know you're completing a book project. Could you tell us a bit about your book? Sure. I am completing my book project, which is based on my dissertation. The working title is Unsettled Islam, Virtuous Contention in European Mosques. And this book is based on a comparative study of two of Europe's largest mosques, one in Berlin, the Sheetleek Mosque, which is a Turkish community predominantly, and the other in London, the East London Mosque, predominantly a Bangladeshi community. In, in this book, I really try to push back at assumptions that we have about Islam in Europe, which has risen as one of the main dominant social conflicts um, across the continent and the UK, <laughs> arguably not on the continent today, um, by looking at the ways in which religious practice and self-understanding, so identities, come to the fore in a collective and institutional form, so the form of the mosque. And whether this has effects on the cities at hand, so it's really an urban study of these two mosques, but as well as the country and the continent. Um, and so in this book, I spent about in order to write this book, I spent about two and a half years in these two mosque communities. So it's predominantly an ethnography of the mosques, but I also interviewed religious leaders and other kind of important figures in the mosque, including police officers, local political figures working with the mosque. Um, and my argument really, I have to say, is I, I felt a wolf in sheep's clothing <laughs> because while my area of study is clearly Muslims in Europe, I am making an argument about Europe and the unsettled nature of European identity. And so what Muslims in Europe today show us about Europe as a whole, both historically, so I really begin in the Reconquista, making it somewhat of a comparative historical project as well. Um, what it tells us about European history, but also these ongoing conflicts that are, we're seeing them really rise in Europe right now over European identity, how Europe can remain cohesive, if it can remain cohesive, um, and what a truly plural Europe looks like. What did you find that surprised you? I expected the mosque that I visited and, or researched in um, Berlin. It's often been hailed as a quote-unquote model mosque. The reason for this is that it is seen to be progressive, although it's highly traditional. And the, the sort of forms of Islam they practice are very traditional. But this is because it's very engaged with the local community and it really values cosmopolitanism and this sort of global, both like a local and global um, identification. So while all of the individuals that I spent time with would identify as quote unquote Muslims first, as, as they often would say, they would also very much identify as Berliners um, and they would seek to build bridges to local society. So for this reason, politicians, media, everyone loved this mosque. So I expect it to be quite easy to undertake research there and quite difficult in London because it's a more complicated mosque in terms of its theological and social underpinnings. Um, often asked when I write papers to say whether this is a Salafi mosque or a Wahhabi mosque, or, but it's not really that simple. Uh, it has a lot of influences from different schools of thought in Islam, but it does have this sort of purist vision. And in fact, it was extremely it was much easier in some ways for me to undertake research in this community. It was extremely open to me and my project. I was explicit about who I was and what type of research I was doing. And I actually felt that a community that is often very marginalized and that is seen to be very problematic in British society wanted to engage me I mean, so deeply, inviting me to their houses, to, to a level I actually, I mean, it took me a year, let's say, to build that up in Berlin. And it took me maybe a month in London. And so I think, I came in with, with presumptions, too, about these different forms of Islam and what it would mean for um, social science research. How is your work different from other projects like this on Islam? So in terms of sociological research, my work takes very seriously the religious underpinnings and expressions of the communities. For this reason, I had to really immerse myself in um, theological learning and debates which I think in sociology is not necessarily the norm. Um, I was reading cultural sociology, which, which uh, and, in that, and in that way, this does make sense um, that I would turn towards kind of the cultural and normative structures of the communities themselves. But I felt that I was trying to not just understand 
how these communities thrive or integrate or incorporate in Europe, but also understand them in their own sort of normative terms. And that meant for me like so much learning. Even when I submitted the first draft of my book manuscript, one um, female Muslim scholar came back and said, things that you're perceiving as microaggressions, those are just pedagogical approaches um, in these types of communities. And so your sort of liberal subjectivities still come through. Although, you know, I you know admire that you've well, a lot of the book isn't written in that way. I can still see these pieces where you're uncomfortable or uncertain. And so I feel like for me it was this really fantastic um, process and project of learning not only about Islam and Muslims in Europe, but also learning so much about kind of Western normativities uh, that span the United States and Europe and learning to think outside of my own cultural conceptions and norms. In what ways is your work important for American leaders in any number of areas of society, business, religion, politics? So my work, um, while my book project is focused on Europe, I focus now on Muslims in Europe and the United States. I've also led research in New York City on the impact of Muslims across various fields and created a lot of bridging projects with other institutions um, or cultural with cultural and social institutions like the New York Public Library and the Tenement Museum, the Cathedral St. John the Divine to sort of think through major social issues. Now, Islam in Europe and the United States is always in the media. Um, there are a lot of misperceptions and misconceptions that I think are extremely dangerous. I think that they make their way into academic work because we all live within our own kind of social subjectivities. Uh, I do think that my work helps. I mean, it's one of, of many scholars, but to break through these liberal subjectivities. And I am really active and engaging, especially through writing. So I do make time um, and now have outed myself as a public scholar <laughs> to write more publicly and to kind of think through these things in more common vernacular so that at least there is factually, like there are accessible uh, facts and accessible narratives that might be garnered through really deep research over years, but then can be spread or, or accessed by the public at large. And so I think my broader goal has been to write both in a way that's successful even in some of my academic work and to write for media outlets and then to create partnerships, whether it's with journalists or with cultural institutions where we could be having these conversations. They're not divided between just the academy talking amongst itself and then just sort of these broader publics talking amongst themselves, but rather bringing them together. That's great. That's very fascinating. Thank you so Thanks. much, Elizabeth. Thank you. Great to have you.